Hello everyone. Today I'm going to start a new video series on PySpark. Now what we have seen in recent months and maybe a couple of years, PySpark is getting a lot of attention from different enterprises, especially for their ETL jobs. And the reason is quite obvious. If you are migrating your ETL jobs to Spark, the traditional developers, the ETL developers are somebody who is very good in SQL. But they are not that good or that comfortable in writing any programming language. When it comes to Python or Scala, Python is still very comfortable for non-programmers, I should say, right, as compared to Scala. If you are from a Java background, you may find Scala pretty straightforward. However, if you are coming from a background like me who has good SQL experience, right, data warehouse experience, ETL experience, but not that much experience in writing any programming languages, then Python may become your obvious choice. Also, the enhancements and the improvements we are seeing in Python API for Spark is also pretty good. Many new features have been added in PySpark API recently. So when you have to migrate your ETL jobs or write new ETL jobs on Spark, PySpark is becoming the first preference for the enterprises. Also recently, few of my friends, mind it, these are experienced people with 14-15 years of professional experience developing and maintaining data warehouses for Fortune 100 clients, right? Now when they are transitioning from typical RDBMS solutions like Teradata, NetEase, Oracle to Spark, they don't know what pathway to follow. They know the SQL, but they don't know the Spark. It's kind of a black box for them. So they also are interested to understand what should be their transition path now why they are reaching out to me is i have done this similar thing in past six seven years where i started typically working on teradata netiza oracle and then i migrated to big data stack initially it was on premises hadoop where i worked a lot on hive spark impala and now it's it's cloud based right so you have emr and other cloud services which gives you hadoop environment right so in this video series i will try to cover all those points like if you are if you are a beginner then definitely you will find it very helpful but also if you are somebody who is very well experienced with sql and pretty good in data analytics and they just want to learn the spark to replicate somewhat similar functionality what they are doing in their typical rdbms they want to do something similar on spark how they can do it so i'll try to cover those points as well as part of this video, I want to cover five basic points, like if it's your day one on PySpark, what all things you should do or what all things you should know to make you comfortable, right? The very first thing we'll do is we'll check the Hadoop, Python and Spark version. So I'm not covering how to install Spark, right? Probably for that you can refer to other videos, but I'm assuming that you already have an environment where Spark is already installed. You have it for your disposal and you can use it but you are just not sure what to do with it, right? So your environment is there, but you're not sure how to use it, right? So I just want to define a path for you so that which you can follow and then you can learn. So first thing we'll check the Hadoop, Python and Spark version. This actually is very important and should be the very first step. Uh, like for example, if you're working on Spark 2.4, right? Then there may be some features which are not available as of now for you, or there may be some new features which now are available in 2.4 or could be some features which are deprecated or could be some features which are completely obsolete right so if you are doing any google research right you are looking for the answers make sure that you also check for the spark version so whatever the answers you are getting right on the web you should make sure that it applies to your spark version also some of the configurations the default value might have changed like if you are, if you are using spark 1.4 uh, default value for a configuration could be true but come to spark 2.4 that might have changed to false now right similarly for python also right so you should be aware that what version you are using and that will help you in long term uh, next thing we'll do is we'll connect to pyspark cli quickly uh, to run some ad hoc queries in an interactive manner as part of those tasks, we'll be loading a CSV file into a data frame and then we'll fetch some columns from that data frame 
and we'll also check the schema at last we'll see that whatever data frame we have created what are the metadata information and how to fetch it like say if you are coming from a traditional data warehouse background right you're using teradata oracle then you have system tables right where you can actually query your t system tables to get say columns metadata or a table level metadata so similarly we'll see if we have a data frame in PySpark and how to get that metadata information of it right so right now data frame you can uh, just assume that it is nothing it is if you're coming from SQL background it is somewhat uh, structure is somewhat what we have a typical table so data frame stores information in form of rows and columns so this is the closest thing uh, in spark which can <laughs> which can be uh, considered as table in a traditional rdbms environment right so uh, for now i just want, want you to remember like this that if you have table in your traditional rdbms equivalent to it in pyspark word would be a data frame right all right so that's all uh, i want to cover these these five points in this video so let's quickly start to the hands-on right so if you see here i am connected to the emr right now and the very first thing as i said right that uh, we have to check the corresponding versions right so first thing we want to check is the hadoop version so for this the command is hadoop version you can see i'm using hadoop 2.1 then next thing i wanted to check is what is my python version so i'm using python 3.7.9 which is pretty good if you are working on python 2.7 you may want to upgrade it because some of the uh, libraries are deprecated and may not be supported in python 2.7 right and next thing we wanted to test is what is the pyspark version right so pyspark version so you can see i'm using uh, spark 2.4.7 version and scala version is 2.11.12 right so now we know the version right the next thing i want to do is connect to PySpark CLI so connecting is pretty straightforward you just have to write PySpark and hit enter and you can see right that it is connecting so I'm using Python 3.7.9 as I mentioned the default log level is set to warning maybe in the future videos I'll explain that what are the different log levels like error info warning and how we can set it and spark version is obviously 2.4.7 the other important thing here is spark session is available as spark right so since i'm i'm working interactively in cli i don't have to explicitly create a spark session it is available to me as spark so wherever i need a spark session i can directly call spark right uh, if i am running it in a batch mode right i may want to create a spark session and we'll see in later videos when we'll run the jobs in a batch mode how to create a spark session and use it in the code but for now just remember this thing that these are the versions to connect to pyspark cli you just type pyspark hit enter it will give you some interface like this and your spark session by default is available as spark so you have to remember this thing you don't have to explicitly create any spark session it is available for you right now right now as i said right as part of this video the first task we want to do now is read a csv file and load it into a data frame and data frame is nothing it looks like a table right and uh, that we'll see now right so let me create a data frame so i'm creating a data frame named data frame underscore category df underscore category and in my s3 right i have one file and i'll share uh, in the description i'll share the path where you can download and test it yourself right so now I have to read that file, right? So it is in pyspark.demo bucket and there is a raw directory and there I have a file which is category pipe.txt. So right now what is happening is I just have specified that okay use spark.read.csv and this is the path. So it's a single line command where I can specify the path and it will read it and it will create a data frame known as df underscore category. If I want to see my data, right, what exactly I have loaded, I'll just run a data frame dot show command. So dot show will, what it will do is it will load the data from this CSV file into this data frame, right? So now uh, I can see some data is there, but it does not look nice, right? When I say nice is that you can see that all the values like the column values are actually pushed into a single column which is underscore C0 since I'm not giving any name it will 
uh, by default it will assign it underscore c0 c1 c2 c3 like that so only i can see only one column and seems like all the values are pushed into a single column right and the reason is that if you see here right uh, the delimiter actually is pipe here and by default read csv expects it to have comma as a delimiter so since it didn't find any comma it just pushed everything into a single column right so how to fix it so let me fix it now so for that i'll just use my previous command where i am reading the csv file and i would like to specify what is the delimiter right so for that i have to specify dot option and delimiter is the keyword and then what is the delimiter right so if you see here right what i have done is i am running a spark read and then i am specifying an option explicitly that for this csv file the delimiter is pipe so it overrides the default value of uh, comma with a pipe and now i can see yes there are four columns right and four columns 11 rows c0 c1 c2 c3 are the column names and this is how my data looks like right now one thing which is not very clear here right that you can see that some of the values right are getting truncated here and i may want to see the full values without any truncation right so before we see that I also want to mention one point be very careful while you are adding the options the option should come before your dot csv right else what will happen is if you will add your dot option after your dot csv what will happen is it will do spark read csv and it will load this file into this data frame and whatever the option you will supply here it will be applicable on the data frame not the csv file and then it will throw an error so make sure that if you are adding dot option delimiter it comes before your dot csv right all right now coming to the earlier point right what i was saying is that we can see that the values are getting truncated here the three dots which you are seeing at the end it means that there is some characters which it is skipping right now and if you want to see all the characters right then it's a pretty straightforward uh, all you have to do is in the show command right just use false as a default value for your truncate right so pass one parameter to the dot show method truncate equal to false and when I run this, uh, it will show me all the values right in this data frame without any truncation. So I have four columns here, 11 rows, all the values are coming, no truncation. So this looks good to me, right? That uh, I can see in the data frame what all values I have and uh, how the data looks like, right? Now by default, the dot show uh, shares the top 20 rows on the console, right? But right now I just have 11 data, so it is showing all. But if I would have, let's say, 20 plus 40 records, then also it would have shown me only top 20 records only, right? So here I have 11, so it is showing all the 11 records. <coughs> Next case I want to do is say, I don't want to see all the records. I just want it to show me five records, right? So the dot show can actually take one more parameter which is ideally the first parameter where you can pass the number of records you want to see right so here in this case i am showing dot show five which means show me the five records truncate equal to false means show me the complete character right do not truncate the characters right so here you can see after running this command i can see all the four columns but only five rows this time and there is a prompt only showing top five rows right so I'll just take two seconds uh, pause here so that you can see and analyze. All right. So next use case, right? What I want to do. So now I have a data frame. I've loaded some data into it. I can preview the data. It looks good. Now coming to the uh, some more use cases, right? What else uh, should I do, right? So let me select all the columns right the very first thing if you're coming from a sql uh, background right the first thing you do is when when you have a data in the table right you run a select statement right so say you want to run a select star from the table right so in this case as i said a rough analogy will be like uh, whatever you have in the table it is a uh, data frame is somewhat equivalent to that so you want to run a select star on that data frame so that's how you can run it so if I run this query, right, uh, what it will do is it will from this data frame, it will select all the columns and it will show it on the screen, right? So you can see it. This is equivalent to your select star from table, 
right so here i'm doing basically select star from data frame i hope this is clear right and similarly you can add some more like if i just want to show five records so it will show me five records and it will show me all the columns right the next thing could be that i don't want to run all the i don't want to select all the columns i want to list down what columns i want to see right in the output so for that uh, there are two ways i'll uh, two more common ways i should put it like this and one is definitely to specify the column right underscore c0 underscore c1 like that so here what i have done is i have specified the first two columns so it's like select column one comma column two from your table equivalent to that is this query where you will give data frame name dot select and then you can list your column names here and then dot show just to show it here right so this is equivalent to select column list right from your data frame so the next thing you may want to say i don't want to write ex explicitly right if i have to run similar query 10 times i don't want to write my column names all the time right so what what you can do is you can just create a list right so say column underscore list you can create it like this and create a list with the column names whichever column you want underscore c0 underscore c1 underscore c2 so say i have given right that three columns i have uh, mentioned here right so i've created a list with with the name column list and i'll come back to this select query and instead of passing individual column names all i'll do here is i'll pass this list right so rather than passing the individual column names i'm passing a list here and you can see right now it is showing me all the three columns which were passed in the list right so that's another way of uh, passing the list to the select statement and getting that column in the output right now one more thing right you may feel little awkward here is that my column names are not nice right c0 c1 c2 does not make much sense to me right so i'll use a similar approach i'll create a list right however this time right rather than giving uh, c0 c1 c2 i'm going to rename my headers right basically the column names so let me give some column names meaningful column names to these columns category id category group category name and category description so now i have a list with uh, four entities in it and uh, i'm going to use these four values as my column name so i'll be replacing c0 c1 c2 c3 with this column name right and to do that it is pretty straightforward all you have to do is the category which is your data frame so i'm going to create overwrite my data frame and just use 2df and i can pass this list as an argument right now if i run the same command again right select let me run this so what will happen is this column list is applied to two data frame function i'm using 2df and you can see right now i instead of c0 c1 c2 c3 i have proper names for my data frame columns right so this looks more meaningful to me right that we are so what I, what all we have done right now is we have read a csv file then we specified a delimiter for it once we have that information we saw that how to show the data by using select then in select we can either specify star to list down all the columns or else we can use a list of columns for that if we want to rename the column we can rename it using by creating a list and then we can pass it to df function that list and then it will rename it right and now the data looks good to me right now after this task right i also mentioned that we'll be talking about some metadata thing right and uh, schema thing about the data frames how to check those properties so let's start with that discussion okay 
so let me just so uh, we i know that it has four columns 11 records in total now uh, i may want to see that only no i just want all the columns which are there in my data frames right so you can see that uh, for that i just have to give my data frame dot columns and it will return a list with the column names only right so i have four columns and i did data frame dot columns and it returned me a list so please be very careful it writ the written type is list so if you have to store it somewhere right say you want to store it somewhere in say li equal to df underscore category columns so this li right now is a list right so if you have to traverse it right you can traverse it for ci in li and say so that's how you can traverse a list right in python i'll not go into python tutorials because i'll keep it to PySpark. but my point here is when you are using any metadata related functions on data frame right you have to be careful to understand the written type of those right so in this case df dot category df category dot columns returns a list type you can either store it or you can directly do a traversal using this and to traverse the list you can use a for loop right so now you know that how to check the columns right if you just want to see what all columns are there in the data frame you can use dot columns for that right similarly if you want to see that okay i want to see what are the data types so dot d types so it will show you that column name column type column name column type column name column type column name column type right and similarly for this also right you can uh, traverse uh, this is also a list so you can also traverse this easily by using a for loop right so i will not go into that for looping but you can traverse here the object will become i0 this will become i1 like that so you can traverse that as well so now we have, we know how to check the column names we know how to check the data types for each column right uh, now sometimes you may want to see the proper schema of your data frame in a beautiful tree format right so for that the dot print schema is the method so data frame dot print schema and it will show you a proper tree uh, flow of your data frame so we have root <coughs> at the top and then these are the column names and the data type all right so i think this uh, should be good if you want to see right uh, this is a tree representation if you just want to see the schema so, and then you can just write this and it will show you that structure type list and then field and what are the <coughs> same information basically but in this format so for i think for reading purpose right visualization purpose this is a better format so you can use this format to display or maybe push into the console or the, into the log file uh, if you want to see the data frame uh, schema right all right so other than that what else we can do right so you can also copy the schema from one data frame to another data frame right so like how to do that so let's let me create a schema object right from this category dot schema so now my schema right it has the schema information of this data frame right and say i want to create another data frame now df category 2 and i'll use the same option spark read dot option delimiter and pipe is my delimiter and i want to read a csv file and this csv file is present in right so if if i create this data frame right so right now i am not applying any explicit schema on top of it so what will happen is uh, it will read the csv and again if i have to show you right df dot category dot show to you see right that uh, sorry my bad df category 2 is what i created just now so you see in right this is the older data frame where i changed the column names right 
and this is the new data frame which i have just now read the csv file and i can see the column names are again c0 c1 c2 c3 right and say i am in a situation where i don't want this to happen right like i don't want to again specify the schema and everything rename the columns and everything i know the data frame for this type of csv is going to have these many columns and this will be the header for it so it's very easy like we added uh, option there right similarly what we can do is we can simply specify in my previous command right like we added an dot option delimiter we can specify dot schema here right dot schema and then all i have to do is specify the schema name so here when i created the schema right let me scroll up and see schema is the object name i've given so i will just give schema as schema and then i'll run and now when i'll show it so you can see right so my point here is if you have applied some transformations or done any changes to the uh, existing data frame right and you want to replicate same schema to another data frame right and you don't want to go through the entire process of defining the schema and then applying it you can simply copy a schema from one data frame and apply it on top of another data frame so that will save a lot of time uh, depending on your use case right so i think that that is all i wanted to cover as part of this uh, tutorial guys uh, this video that what all we have seen today is we have uh, checked the versions then we logged into the PySpark CLI and then we loaded a, we read a CSV file we loaded it into a data frame we preview the data it was not looking nice everything was clubbed into a single column then we added an option for the delimiter which was pipe in this case and uh, now the data looks pretty good the only problem was some of the values were getting truncated and to figure out that what are the clear values or the total values the complete values we specified the option as truncate equal to false please be very careful this is case sensitive so if you'll write false in lower case it may throw an error so we specified truncate equal to false and now we can see the complete values for this column we don't want to see all the records we want to see first five records we'll do dot show five and then truncate equal to false and it will show you top five rows without any truncation after that we try to replicate select star uh, typical select star query from sql into data frame so for that dot select is the method we use and we pass star and then it showed everything all the columns for us next thing we wanted to do was uh, specify some column names rather than specifying star so we can do it by passing individual column names in the select method and it will show only the selected columns there is another way of doing the same approach we can create a list and then uh, uh, rather than writing all the column name explicitly we can just pass that list and then also it will work perfectly fine after that what we did is uh, we tried to rename the data frame column names right now it was c0 c1 c2 c3 it was not very meaningful so we created a list with the meaningful column names and then we applied it into the data frame using data frame equal to data frame dot two df and then we pass this column list with the column names and then when we preview the data frame we can see proper column names coming into the output right so we have the proper column names after that we look, touch base few very basic metadata related uh, uh, queries in data frame so you have a data frame just add dot columns to it and it will return a list with all the column names in your data frame you can traverse the list to see that what all columns in a proper format or even this is okay after that once we did it we saw that if we want to see the data type also along with the column name we can use dot d types and this also returns a list with two items in each right so you have column names and data type of that column then we saw that if you want to preview the data frame schema in a very proper beautiful tree format we can use print schema function and we can also use dot schema it will show you the struct type if it is not that readable you may try print schema both almost convey the same information right then uh, we saw that if we want to copy schema from one data frame to another that is also feasible so here we have copied a schema of df category by passing dot schema into another object so it will hold this information and while reading the data frame right again from a csv file a similar csv file we just pass dot schema 
while reading the csv file and it will apply that schema information onto this data frame so now you don't have to explicitly rename or if you would have done any other schema changes to a previous data frame those will be copied automatically to your new data frame so you don't have to do it again here right all right so that's it guys uh, that's all i wanted to cover as part of uh, demo one right and uh, i think i've covered that and uh, if you if it helps please like and subscribe i'll make sure that i post consistently on this video series in day two i'll be covering more about the select statements how you can apply some filters and fetch values how you can transform some column values and i'll also try to match it with the equivalent sql query so that it makes more sense to you all right all right guys thanks a lot thanks for watching this video